Accounts payable errors aren't just about messy bookkeeping. They can lead to duplicate payments, strained supplier relationships, and costly penalties, i.e. late fees. In today's fast-paced financial and business environment, even small mistakes can snowball into big problems. Whether it's having to reverse a transaction, push through new entries, or deal with those dreaded corrected journal entries, these errors can muddy your audit trail, leaving some confusion for you, both your auditors and management. Best practice organizations know that avoiding these pitfalls is key to maintaining clean and accurate financial records. In this piece, we're going to uncover some of the most common accounts payable mistakes and explore their impact on the accounting entries and provide you with tips for fixing the accounting records to keep them accurate and ready for your auditors. Mistake number one, keying mistake. Now, do you think automation has eliminated all data entry errors? Think again. Even the best systems can't catch everything, and one wrong keystroke can lead to payment delays and audit, audit headaches. This base mis mistake that just about everyone has and everyone makes at some point or another has been greatly reduced in recent years thanks to the automation of invoice processing. Yet it has not completely gone away as almost no organization is 100% automated and even with robust automation, there are still errors on invoices and purchase orders that need to be fixed. With the rise of AI and automation, many of these errors are becoming easier to prevent, but not completely. Technology is not the silver bullet, and you still need strong processes in place to catch what automation misses. A very simple example is made when entering data. In accounts payable, the most common time that this happens is when entering invoice date. How do you fix it? First, recognize and accept the fact that as long as humans enter any data, there will be errors. So, as much as you can, eliminate manual entry of data. But keep in mind, you're not going to get rid of it all. Once that is done, the key is to identify the error as early as possible in the process so you can fix it. In invoice processing, ideally this is during the verification phase during the three-way match. You might also find errors if you batch enter when doing your batch total. Now, warning. Approvers who sign off on the invoices rarely find errors on invoices, so they cannot be counted on for this. That is why we make such a big emphasis about doing the three-way match. Mistake number two, duplicate entry of the same transaction. This happens when the same transaction is entered more than one time. There are several reasons or occasions when this might happen. Someone might have just, might have sent the same transaction more than once or in a, a process that unintentionally enters the same transaction more than once. The example that many listening to this are most familiar with is when you get multiple copies of the same invoice, which is a huge problem in accounts payable today. If the second copy isn't caught, and sometimes it isn't, then the transaction is entered a second time and the risk of duplicate payment skyrockets. And of course, um, your accounting records are not so good. How can you fix this? Number one, step number one, identify the source of the error. Is it in your shop? or is the supplier sending multiple copies? There's a high probability, by the way, it's the latter. Step two, if it's the latter, contact your suppliers and ask them to stop sending the duplicates. Now, you probably, you may or may not be successful with this, but warn them that if it continues, there's a good chance their invoices will go on the list of those that need to be double-checked, and this will likely delay payment. If they're being honorable and truly sending du duplicates, the duplicate invoice number checking routine that you use will catch this. However, if they're changing the invoice number, which a few of them do, you've got a bigger problem. If you catch the duplicate early on, and it's possible, remove the duplicate entry. If not, you're going to need to make an adjusting entry to get the item off your books. Mistake number three, data was never entered into the accounting system, even though the transaction went through. Ever had a payment go through and not hit the books? These invisible transactions, if you will, can wreak havoc on your financials. The most common example of a transaction not recorded, at least in accounts payable, revolves around rush payments um, and most frequently a rush paper check. The, the transaction is put through, but again, the accounting entries are not done. This is just one more reason why rush payments are a terrible idea. How can you fix it? 
Number one, identify the omission. This will frequently happen during your reconciliation process. You're doing a bank rec, something cleared on the, uh, on the bank, uh, a payment cleared on the bank, yet there's nothing on, in your records. It's another reason why we strongly recommend daily uh, bank recs, because when the omission is identified, your records can be identified, uh, can be adjusted, and of course, you're not going to end up short, short in cash. Step number two, record the transaction correctly. Ideally, it's discovered early enough so the transaction can be put through. If not, you're going to have to put through one of those journal entries. We're not the date number four. Data entry was reversed. This happens when a transaction is recorded in the wrong direction, meaning a debit is recorded as a credit or vice versa. Let me give you a simple example. Suppose a company purchases widgets worth $25,000 on credit. The correct journal entry should be debit widget expense $2,500, credit accounts payable $2,500. However, in our simple example, the entries were reversed with ex widget expenses being credited, credited and accounts payable debited, being debited. How to fix. In order to have an accurate audit trail, you'll need to put through two sets of entries. The first will correct or reverse the original transaction, and the second will record the transaction as it should have been entered. Mistake number five, data is entered to the wrong account. For example, if you're making a payment for an invoice that was received from company A for $10,000, but you'll probably but you made it, you recorded it to company B, you'll probably discover this when company A, vendor A, calls looking for their money. In this case, the accounting entries put through were debit accounts payable for vendor B $10,000, credit cash for $10,000. How can you fix it? Again, so you have a clear audit trail, you're going to have to put through two sets of entries. The first will reverse the incorrect transaction, getting the funds off vendor B's account, and the second will be as the transaction should have been put through in the first place. Mistake number six, compensating errors. It might seem like a, a blessing at first when you have two mistakes going in opposite directions, but and they cancel each other out, but this is not necessarily true. When the two transactions that cancel each other out or appear to, um, you can have a big problem. Let me give you an example. Mistake number one, a bookkeeper records a payment of $10,000 to a supplier as a payment of $1,000, resulting in an understatement of $9,000. Mistake number two, in a completely separate transaction, bookkeeper records a sale, a cash sale of $5,000 as a cash sale of $14,000, resulting in an overstatement of $9,000 in revenue. They balance each other out, so initially it may not be obvious that there's a mistake. Um, you might find this when you get a statement from your supplier showing a credit and you, you do your investigation. How can you fix it? Put through entries to reverse both transactions and then another uh, set of uh, transactions to get the data on your books correctly. Of course, sometimes when there are numerous entries like this, a decision will be made to put through just one or two journal entries to correct the whole mess. While that is certainly easier for the person creating the journal entries, it can create other problems and it lacks the visibility into the audit trail. Um, and occasionally, just keep in mind that these journal entries are used to, describe, to disguise a fraud, which is why we believe journal entries should be used as sparingly as possible, if at all, in these situations. In fact, we think the whole issue of journal entries and fraud is so important that we recently did a short talk on it, which you can watch right now using the link that has appeared on your YouTube screen and is in the description. Good luck.